All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, this has been such an incredible afternoon of inspiration and vulnerability. And um, I know personally that it is an honor that I get to play just this small part in the opportunity for you to share your stories with everybody in this room. Um, but I know that this process is unique. And already during the break, people were like asking you, like, I have so many questions, <laughs> right? And so we are gonna do a short, just about like 10 minutes of uh, Q&A. I have a couple questions. Um, I will see if there's any questions from the audience. We have about time for two. So if you have one, be thinking about it. But um, I wanna talk to you about this work and about what it was like to develop a TED Talk um, and to be up here and to deliver it and what are your nerves like? Like, let's talk about the personal stuff about it, right? Um, your anxieties with it. What was that experience like um, preparing for today and then delivering today? Anybody want to start on that one? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, my mic will work. There we go. I was like, Henry, <laughs> we're good. Um, the TED Talk is different. Um, because the process that you go through is one that helps you kind of really unlock your passions and kind of the core of what it is that you do. I had the fortune to be able to do a ton of speaking during my year. Um, I gave over 100 different speeches. But this talk, I both felt that I put in the most time preparing for and felt the least prepared for. <laughs> because it's, it's a personal journey that you go through. And I'm A, honored to be able to speak and share that journey here. But I'm most honored that I had the opportunity to go through the process of working through the things that you go through in a TED Ed masterclass. Um, so the process with that had a lot of nerves because it's unpacking kind of the soul of who you are. And it's, and it's being able to share that with others. And I think that's a real reason as to why we do so much of what we do. And I think the fact that we all had nerves with this shows that we went through that process in a genuine way, so. Uh, as I went through this process, I did it for myself. And I wanted to just always give, you know, this TED Talk style uh, type of event. And as I went through this, one of the things that I challenged in doing is I tried to make my message initially for the audience, trying to make it applicable to everyone. And then Sarah reminded me, you know, you just share the message that you have and the people that need that, they're gonna hear it and accept it. So as I went through this, and my advice to anyone would be, you know, do it for yourself of what you wanna share and that message will resonate and people will find ways to apply it in their own lives. You don't have to do that connection for them. Yes. I um, got the chance to do some, some public speaking. Not 100 speeches. That's a lot of days. I have, um, I have little life. <laughs> I love it. Um, but one is that I, I, li I'm a, I like to prepare a lot. Like, I am a planner. And so I wrote, you know, word for word exactly what I wanted to say. And then yeah. somewhere along the process of doing this, I realized that one of the big differences with a TED Talk is... That's not what it should even sound like. Um, I wanted to be talking to the audience. And uh, I totally credit one of my students because I said, man, I don't have this part memorized and I'm a little worried about this. And she texted me this morning and she asked if I would wear the scarf that she picked out and I promised her I would. And, I, and she said, just pretend you're talking to us. And I thought that was much better uh, in terms of what kind of separates this emotionally from like a keynote, right? Mm. Is that I have everything right there and I'm super prepared and there's lines that I say every time I do a keynote. And this is just something so much more personal. Um, it's a lot more like presenting in a classroom, I think. You know, I think like to add to that, like it doesn't have to be this novel or grand idea. Like I think we watch TED Talks and we walk away so amazed and so inspired. But you know that you have like that same inspiration, that same amazement within the own stories that you carry and that your students uh, carry. And so like for me, doing the work of the, the TED Masterclass was just really digging within 
and trying to figure out what are the things that has happened within my own life, my own story, and within my students' lives and within my classroom that I could share. And that's the thing that like helps with the anxiety. There's still anxiety, like it's, it's gonna happen. Um, but I think just really relying and leaning into the stories that exist within your own personal um, is the thing that helps to keep me and I would probably venture off to say all of us sane throughout the process. I'm still bummed that I missed this whole section of mine. Oh. Can you actually, okay. <laughs> so now that you've- um, Still cranky, like I came off okay. the stage and I was like, I missed a whole part. And it was like, nobody noticed. I'm like, I noticed. <laughs> so, um, but, so can yeah. I ask you about that part? So um, now that you've entered the middle school realm, yeah. what's that been like well, that for you? that was the part I said, you know, you're probably wondering how my first year of middle school went. And I said, bruh. <laughs> it hits different. It's a mood, no cap. <laughs> but I do it for the plot. And I didn't get to say any of that stuff. <laughs> so but it's killing right now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I missed that whole fun part, but that's okay. Yeah, so the delivery is like, you know, in your room, it's perfect. And then you come down here, and even dress rehearsal, I was a hot mess at dress rehearsal. Then I went back in But then room. you. But then I went back <laughs> to my room. I didn't know something like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just missed some humor. So I guess it's not that bad. I guess my message got across. So I'm still like cranky about that part right now. I'm like, oh, this is the good stuff. And you're allowed to be. And I think that um, your vulnerability in sharing that, when your whole talk was about <laughs> these <laughs> moments that we <laughs> feel. I messed up. No, I and, I think, okay. and I think it's great that we're talking about it because I think that for some of us, doing public speaking is not necessarily something that we're like, yes, pick me, right? Yeah, or yeah. or um, I feel so comfortable standing in front of people. But being able to be vulnerable about the fact yeah. that like this is something that you've written that yeah. you've practiced, that you know, and yes, you missed this part, but your through line still held. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Also, I, I am sorry that for the rest of your life, your own lines will be used against you. Yeah. Right, like so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we've alluded to this a little bit, and you started sharing of this, but how do you even write a TED Talk? Like, I mean, a presentation, a keynote, you're like, okay, you've got 45 minutes. Let's talk about best practices for mm -hmm. math educators. But like, how do you even develop a talk? <laughs> Anyone want to take well, that big question? We, we were lucky enough to have access to the TED Masterclass um, videos, which take you through how to start, what to do, and, and where to go, and what to go back to, and what to look at, taking your time with it. and. Um, I guess the best advice is like finding that that through line that, um, and I know that we some of us struggled with, and I don't want to speak for anybody, but <laughs> finding that through line to go through, and then coming back and circling back to it, and um, for me it was like the safety of science. I came back to it, you know, um, sort of weaving the tapestry of your talk, so mm. to speak, and and they they really guide you through um, with video lectures and lessons on how to get there. Can I jump yes, in please. there? So like. I'm glad you mentioned the through line because me, my through line, I lied to you not, I probably changed it 77 times. Yeah. Um, because it's the hardest part, just trying to figure out what is that, what's going to be that anchor of your speech. I think that we all have these really great stories that we can tell, but without that through line, it just becomes a compilation of stories, right? And so what do people do with that? What do they walk away with? And so just really refining that one piece has been the biggest challenge, but once that through line is solidified, it's beauty in the writing, right? This is mm -hmm. deep introspection that you uh, go through uh, that connects all of these beautiful pieces of your own life, of your students' lives, mm -hmm. to that through line that makes writing so much more easier. Right, and I, I spent a ton of time processing that piece. So, like, I started working on my um, TED Ed Masterclass in May of last year, but I didn't actually start writing words until January. Um, I spent a ton of time just thinking and processing every time I went on a walk or a run and I was outside, I just, I would spend time just revisiting, okay, what is, what is the message and what is the internalization of the things and how am I growing with this piece? And once I felt like I had just kind of done all of that me work, 
then the uh, then it just came together. But that that internal work that you do is the creation of that through line of what you want it to be. And once you have that, then you're set and it can just unlock like the onset. So absolutely. I actually, um, the California, when the 2023 cohort was out in California, um, we did this storytelling workshop and the group of my cohort who was at that table, I had literally just met, um, the story I told was about why I had this tattoo. And it was those teachers who said to me, you got to do something with that. Like, that's a great story. Um, that is miles away from the TED talk that I gave here tonight. But so many of those teachers were involved along the way with, with me being like, what do you think of this? And can I run this by you? And um, the, like, I, I'm, I bet this is the case for many of us on the stage tonight, but I have received so much good advice about other directions that I could go um, with this speech that I think it, like, we wouldn't be doing the process justice if we didn't talk about the amount of collaboration mm -hmm. that really goes into uh, making what was here. Yeah, and just to continue that, using that collaboration, they are able to have that outside perspective on how other people are gonna perceive your talk because we get so sometimes set in a certain way that we want to do something with just a small little change, it helps to elevate it to a level that we wouldn't have been able to do on our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for all of those points. Um, we have time for maybe one question. Do you have one question? Someone's got a, lot of pressure. a burning question. One question. I know, someone's like, well, I had one, but if it's the only one. <laughs> How do you go? I'm a PE teacher. I'm sure everybody here is being on the right now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get past that internal voice in your head that says, who wants to hear what I have to say? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, a lot of times I go to speak, I'm like, who do I think I am to yes. tell these teachers? Mm -hmm. What they should, you know what I mean? Like this is what this is what it is. I, I I'm a PE teacher. I play games for a living. I don't solve the nuclear crisis or anything. You know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. In, yes, I do. In, yes, I do. In every audience of every speech you give, there will be people that don't resonate and don't care. Just like but, every classroom. Just like every classroom. <laughs> but also in every audience, there will be somebody that connects and you won't know who it is but they need to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. and they will take a nugget that maybe you didn't even recognize and they'll they'll take it home with them and they'll and they'll live in it and so i always think about that whether or not i think the audience is engaged and i'll think okay there's someone in here that is hearing what i have to say and they're taking a message from it and that's why i'm speaking and that's who i'm speaking to and if someone takes something great and Sheila, I get that too. Like, I, who am I? Like, that was the first six months of being Connecticut Teacher of the Year. I'm not gonna lie. Where me being like, what? and then even like being a finalist, I'm like, I think they screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm totally the National Teacher of the Year finalist. Um, but yeah, um, no, I just like you have to get over that. You are an expert. You do know what you're doing. You know kids. You know what's best for students. Like. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Like, so there's this acceptance to be like, you know, like Brian said, somebody needs to hear your message, but you are, people do want to hear what you have to say. Like, get over that, cut that out, okay? Yeah, cut that out right now. <laughs> do you feel attacked with kindness right now? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. And I'm glad you asked the question. Yes. And, 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 and I'm sorry to interrupt. And I like, wasn't going to do it. Like, I came in late to the TED Talk. I was like, I'm not doing it. And somebody's like, just say it. My husband was like, just say it. Just do it. And I'm like, oh, fine. You know, like, so I did it. And then, you know, Sarah calls and was like, we picked you. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, okay. So, um, like, I, I wasn't even going to do the TED Talk thing. I had given up like three times. Um, and then I finally just showed up. But I finally showed up at the Zoom and did it. And then everybody was like, it was great. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so um, I had to get over myself too. But then I wrote this TED Talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think the big aspect, you write it for yourself because you just need to hear what you have to say. Yeah. But then 
when you give it, you do it in a showcase uh, version with all the other teachers, and you just heard everyone here clap for you. These are the people that want to hear your message because they know it a little bit, and there's people in here you've drawn really close to and other people that it will take a little bit longer, but the fact that you have something to share, they want to hear it, and that's enough right there. If it doesn't go past that teacher showcase, you heard it and your other teachers heard it, and that's enough. Anything after that is just bonus. Mm -hmm. I also have to point out that all of these talks, when you think back to them, yes, are education focused, but all of them are applicable to people beyond the classroom. They're about their personal lives, the things that they have experienced, the things they have been through, climbing to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and back. I mean, like, you know, so like there's also that to say that like our lived experiences matter. And so it's pulling from those stories as well. I will say, because um, I'm going to add my two cents in, um, <laughs> right before I was about to give my TED Talk, I had a very similar moment where I was like, did you just pick mine because like, I'm like a nice person? Like I actually said those words out loud. I was like, because I don't really think I'm doing anything profound here. And um, the person from TED that I was working with was like, no, there's lots of nice people. But we don't really, like, like, no, like there is a story here and that's what we need to hear. Um, and your stories matter. So thank you for asking that question and doing it vulnerably and allowing everyone to clap at you. So. <laughs> Nicolette says one more. Anybody else? Don't worry, we won't attack you with kindness. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, she was scratching her head. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, in going through this process, um, as a national, as a national teacher of the year, as a state teacher of the year, as a TED Talk speaker, I know it comes with some level of vulnerability in opening up yourself because you are revealing your authentic self. Have you ever had to deal with any pushbacks because of that? And what would be your advice to us as we step out in the world and face more of these situations? My goodness, what a question, but a great question. <laughs> Who's going to start? I, I actually, um, I, I, because I was the Massachusetts State Teacher of the Year, they were using my picture and uh, pictures of a lot of the cool stuff that I had done with CCSSO this year, me at Space Camp, and uh, you know, just around with people, Washington Week for sure, to advertise to get people to apply for Mass Teacher of the Year. Um, and they were doing this on all the social media. This is my State Department of Ed. And um, I bet it was just one guy, but all these different accounts started saying, you know, this is a lesbian who's grooming your children and uh, taxpayers of, of Martha's Vineyard, do you know what this woman is doing? And um, it was terrifying uh, to see those things. Um, and to kind of get the internet scrubbed of it was hard. Um, I think, and, and that scary moment of like, did I put my family in some sort of risk by doing this? You know, they're talking about where I live. <laughs> But on another note, I, uh, I have so many, not just students, but other uh, people that I've run into who are like, that representation matters. Representation matters in so many forms. Yeah. And thank you. So I think that that vulnerability, um, it, it isn't easy, but it, it does come with you know, that kind of wonderful feeling that somebody somewhere went, hey, I'm like her and I could do that. Yeah. I share a similar experience <clears throat> where um, literally 24 hours after I was named South Carolina Teacher of the Year, there were these um, articles that were posted, tweets, all, all of the things. Um, and so I go back to even what Johanna Hayes said this morning to you all, where like you were called for a time such as this, right? Mm -hmm. Your authenticity, your stories, all of that matters. Um, and I believe the most important thing with being a state or national teacher of the year is that you were afforded this platform because the story that you've shared throughout that process is one that's worth hearing. Even if people claim that they don't want to hear it, it's important, right? Um, and the people that are most dependent upon that are your students. And so that's the thing that I center whenever I do talks, uh, speeches, keynotes, or whatnot, is remembering that 
yes, this is a great honor, but at the end of the day, the people that I'm representing are the ones that depend on me the most, depend on this voice the most, which are my kids. And I think sometimes this world gets caught up in, in all this data and the specifics and the stats that go around with things, and, and data's great. But what's better is, is stories. And when we share the stories that we have, the stories of our kids, and when we work to boil down with those that we're interacting with the root of things, we're gonna find that we have so much more in common. Um, at, at the root of it, we all want to see everyone have their best success. We all want to see everyone do well. And once you've established kind of those core pieces and you find, okay, so we have this common piece, now let's talk about how we do that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, let's first establish what is it that we just believe at our core in the same way. And now let's move in a little step from there. And you'll find that that core expands further than we think. And that's a way to bridge some of that, some of that potential stereotypical scene conflict. Yeah, um, I just because I haven't talked, I guess I should. Um, but the, whoa, was the blue hair controversial? Ooh, people do not like that. <laughs> I thought I was safe in my little bubble. And I'm, I got a lot of uh, similar, not this to some extent, but like um, I had to take the day off from work. I was really hurt by some of the things, the grooming. And, and I, I'm a hetero, I have a husband and chill. Like I, I was not, I'm not even, you know, like I was like, okay. And, um, it became a great lesson at the high school level about how to not engage the trolls. And they're like, miss, I wrote back on that one guy's comment. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> we ignore, we ignore, and we are better than that. And we, you know, and what he said, I don't care what, you know, GOAT 14, 30 day fight said. Like, we are not commenting on that, you know, although internally, I, oh, sorry, microphone. Internally, I was like, that hurt, that broke. Like, some of the things they said, who is this trans woman? And I'm like, whoa, I, what? Like, it was some, some, some things. I'm like, I'm not even, like, that doesn't even, and they weren't educated things, but uh, as I always like people to like me, you know, and that really, and I'm like, what did I do to these people, you know? And it was a great lesson to talk to them because you make everything a lesson, right? Um, to talk to my students about, they don't know me, they don't know who you are, and in life you're gonna meet people who judge you right away. Not because of these great things that they're reading on the internet, that you're a great teacher and you helped all these students do these things, but they just take one look, and that is powerful and scary. They're like, are you gonna turn your hair brown now, miss? I'm like, no way. I'm not gonna change who I am because of some troll on the internet who thinks this, that, and the other. I'm just gonna keep being me for your, my students. Is that okay with you? And they're like, yeah, miss, don't you change. I'm like, all right, perfect. You know, like, so, so yeah, it's, it might happen. It was not because of the TED Talk or anything. It was just right when we were named, I think, was when we got the most baloney. Um, and, um, and so, I, like I said, I had to take the day off to like, be like, oh my, what do I do? Um, and then I think you hired a scrub. Did you hire somebody to scrub the internet for you? Is that what you said? No, I just got friends to be on so the like, lookout. Delete, 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 delete. Yeah. yeah. Every awesome. every app was cool except uh, X. You know, Twitter yeah, yeah. Um, was very difficult to. Yeah. So heads up. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the bathroom wall of the internet. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, two quick points on your, your conversation. Um, it's interesting because we didn't get into teaching, right, to be having these conversations. Yeah. Um, and for so many people, it is not what they planned. Like, oh, great, now I have to figure out how to scrub the internet. Now I have to figure out how to turn this into a lesson for my students while also taking a day off school to process the fact that people are saying these things. Um, and that can be challenging. And finding those spaces where you have people that can be angry with you, that can then laugh about it with you, that then can do something about it, um, is really important. Um, and I know that like, in a very different way with my talk living on YouTube, 
you know, we all know not to live, read the comments, right? Oh, but yeah, then we so read hard. the comments. And then, like, I, I'm always like, oh, they love it. Oh, they love it. Oh, they said it was a waste of 10 minutes. Great. And then there's, like, then someone's talking about my grandmother, because I talk about my grandma, and it's like, oh, bring it. <laughs> like, you talk about my grandma. So, I mean, that, it's a real thing. Whenever we put our work out into the world, whether we're artists or musicians or writers, and now teachers sharing stories. We're putting ourselves out there, and that, that's a really challenging thing. And I want to go back to one word you said, which was like authentic and authenticity. We had a conversation last night about TED Talks and about how so many of them feel like they've got this like performance end of things, right? Like, you've got to have the voice, and it's got to be engaging, right? <laughs> but then we just sat around at dinner and we're like, be yourself. Be authentically yourself. Be a human that's talking to other humans. Don't be a robot. Don't like go into this weird voice that's not even yours. Um, and it can be hard, right? And then we all of a sudden start falling back into the safety of not being ourselves. But we have to work through that. So thank you for that question. Well, I want to thank the, the five of you for such a beautiful evening and afternoon and um, sharing of yourselves and laughing together and really giving us all something to think about as we leave this space. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.